it crammed with headlines, beginning with what many felt was an historic moment, the year 2000 itself. Now, as the true new millennium begins, we look back. And if you could put a face on a year, these would be those faces. Chosen by our staff and your votes, the class of 2000. Headliners and legends who've touched our lives and helped define our year. In this hour, we'll reveal them all and crown our class president. Welcome to a special MSNBC presentation. Headliners and legends, the class of 2000 with Matt Lauer. Hi, everyone, and welcome to a special edition of Headliners and Legends, the class of 2000. Now, over the next two hours, we'll look at the people and places that made up the memorable moments of the past 12 months, the 20 or so individuals that defined the best and the worst of the year 2000. And we'll count down to the headliner you've placed at the top of the class. We begin where it all began, the arrival of the year they called Y2K. Our yearbook of the class of 2000 begins with a look back at the year that was. The year we celebrated the new century. Began and ended with stories out of Florida. With very different individuals. A castaway and two candidates. The castaway was sent back home. One of the candidates was sent to the Oval Office. Despite the protests. It was a year of deja vu. Another Bush was headed for the White House. The Yankees were baseball's champions. Champions of the world today, Friday, October the 27th, 2000. Scooters were the rage. And the Beatles popped the charts. The Middle East was again in flames and Yeltsin threatened to resign. This time, he did. But can you save me? Come on, save me. It was a year of contradictions. High-tech stocks started high and ended low. Oil prices went the other way. Microsoft's billionaire was humbled in the courts, while other millionaires were made, and one married in prime time. It was also a year of firsts. A holy man visited the Holy Land. A strong man stepped aside in the Balkans. A first lady became a senator. A mayor didn't. Because of you, here we are. A new king of sport was crowned, and Tiger Woods is the 100th U.S. Open champion in history. Royalty came of age, and everyone wanted to be a survivor. The threats came from terror on the seas and hackers on the net. Big Tobacco got a little smaller but we railed against tires on the road and guns in the streets. The debate over abortion expanded with a pill, and science may have mapped the route to immortality. We sang, some for the last time. We rapped and defended. The real Slim Shady, please stand up, please stand up, please stand up. As kids popped bubble gum, and popped ecstasy, like there was no tomorrow. And as always, we flocked to the movie screens, went to the dogs, You're the mean one. then cheered a Grinch, watched stars turn into felons, and kept our heroes close to our hearts. And as the curtain lowers on a much anticipated, some say underrated year, we wonder, can 2001 be any more of an odyssey? Coming up, our class of 2000, from the class clowns to the most likely to succeed, and of course the headliner of the year that you've chosen as our class president. Stay with us. Who's our 
headliner of the year? Here's a hint. Our class president is a Connecticut Yankee by birth. The answer's coming up on Headliners and Legends, the class of 2000. Although the year 2000 had its share of celebrity couples in the news, we begin with a look back at the two then unfamiliar faces who leapt onto the front pages with a primetime television marriage. Who wants to marry a multi-millionaire? For two hours, 50 women display themselves in the hopes of attracting the eye of one man. He is not crazy. 22 million viewers watch on February 15th as Rick Rockwell selects and marries Darva Conger on live TV. But almost as quickly as the marriage begins, the honeymoon is over. After less than two months of wedded bliss, the marriage of Mr. and Mrs. Rick Rockwell is annulled. While the multi-millionaire mess-up may have been the most extreme break of the year, it is the separation of a billionaire that is most shocking. Media mogul Ted Turner and actress Jane Fonda are separating. After eight years of marriage, Ted Turner and Jane Fonda call it quits. The announcement is made after months of speculation that the marriage is on the rocks. On June 28th, Meg Ryan and Dennis Quaid announced the dissolution of their nine-year marriage. But even more shocking is the rumored relationship between Meg and Proof of Life co-star Russell Crowe. You'll change your entire life in order to make it happen. Regrettably, Ellen and Anne couldn't make it happen. After three and a half years of their highly publicized romance, the most famous same-sex couple in Hollywood calls it quits. Fortunately, most couples survive the millennium, and a few even get hitched. Oscar-winning stars Billy Bob Thornton and Angelina Jolie are the hottest couple in Hollywood. They meet on the set of Pushing Tin in 1998. This May, they flee to Las Vegas to tie the knot in a cheap, quick, Vegas-style wedding. I'm just so content. While on the other end of the charts, Jennifer Aniston and Brad Pitt spare no expense on their Malibu wedding this July. The reported price tag for this exclusive affair, $350,000 on a wedding coordinator and caterer, $300,000 for lights and tents, $200,000 for entertainment and security, $80,000 for guests, airfare and lodging, $75,000 on flowers, and a $20,000 fireworks show. The total, over $1 million. In early December, Michael Douglas tied the knot with the mother of his baby, Catherine Zeta-Jones, at New York's Plaza Hotel. And to close out the year, there's the material girl. After giving birth to her second child, Rocco, Madonna marries her baby's father, Guy Ritchie, this month in Scotland. Another romance that captured the world's attention this year, Michael Douglas and Catherine Zeta-Jones. They just welcomed their first son in August. While it's new ground for Jones, husband and father are roles Douglas has played before in his long career. He's Hollywood royalty, a major movie star, an award-winning producer, an international humanitarian, and at age 56, a newlywed with a brand new baby, Michael Douglas. He gets his first acting break in television, playing opposite one of his father's oldest friends, actor Carl Malden, in the streets of San Francisco. He never looked like he was acting. I'm sorry, Mike. He just made it look easy, and I always felt that I was watching something real. He's a TV star, but after four years, he decides to leave the series to attempt success in film production. <laughs> Michael hooks up with Saul Zahn to produce One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, a play his father starred in on Broadway in 1963. Together, their passion for the story leads them to create 1975's Best Picture of the Year. is one flew over the cuckoo. But Hollywood still doesn't consider him a leading man. Now, all that changes when he buys a script off a waitress and decides to produce an adventure film in which he casts himself as the leading man. Romancing the Stone and its sequel, The Jewel of the Nile, made him a major movie star. And two of his all-time biggest hits follow. He sends a chill through the nation as the cheating husband in Fatal Attraction, and strikes a nerve in the materialistic 80s by playing a villain in Wall Street. Greed, for lack of a better word.